By the time you're watching this, I'm going to be quite far behind on my videos. So this is kind of in the interim part of my stay in Ireland where I don't really have good camera equipment. I'm gonna make up for that because look what I found on the Irish equivalent of Craigslist. What do we got here? We have, look at this, 30 euros. Yep, that's it, 30 euros. It's got all the parts, all the um, drum key uh, adjustments are there. Typically kind of rare on a piece like this, especially used. The cams themselves are pretty smooth. Everything's kind of good and good shape. I think overall this is a big score for 30 euros. Other than it being cosmetically pretty dirty, it's in really, really fine working condition despite just being single chain. It even has both pads on it still. All the screws are present, everything. You know, it's not a bad pedal for the price, that's for sure. I'm gonna clean this up a bit. I'm gonna see if I can um, provide a little bit of insight on how I would go about refurbishing a pedal like this. By the way, um, for those of you interested to know, I found this one on Pearl Catalog from 2002. It is a Power Pro P100TW double pedal. So it's a really good design for a pedal. Um, the only gripe I have is that since this is the cheaper version, you're gonna have a couple of discrepancies in terms of like adjustability and what you can do, but you can still do quite a lot. Coincidentally, if you guys don't know this um, or didn't know this, these ball bearings uh, inside here, not the physical tiny beads, but the ball bearing mechanism itself, this round thing, uh, once I remove this, you'll be able to see it a little bit clearer um, because I can get at this screw here and then you'll be able to see it and I'll show you. These are the same size as skateboard ball bearings. Let's clean it up. Anyway, first adjustment is drum key adjustments. Let's remove all of those. Coincidentally, if you're doing this at home, do yourself a big favor and take good pictures of where everything's gonna be if you're not familiar with this setup. Um, I've done a couple of these pedals before, so I'm pretty confident, but even then, I'm still going to take pictures of everything assembled so I can compare the before and after when I'm putting everything back together again. I know that, okay, I didn't screw up. So I've removed all the drum key screws from both pedals, the slave, the master, and the link between the two. All of those I'm putting into a little plastic bin here. If you're working on something like this, save yourself some time and get organized. Now that we've removed the drum key screws, uh, let's focus on these screws that you can remove by hand. If, they're, if you have ones that are stuck like that, just move on. We have a screw at the bottom here, textured screw. That one comes off first. Those ones you don't wanna lose. It's easier if you flip it on its side like this and then gravity's not working against you. When working on small parts like this, I find that <laughs> gravity has more than often just been my nemesis. They fall on the floor and uh, those small parts are never seen again. Now that that's loose, that should just come off the screw up here. So what I'm doing is I'm wrapping this around like that. And the idea is minimum required pressure, okay? And now I could probably do the rest by hand. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these. As long as you're all the way in and you're not an idiot about it, it's unlikely that you're gonna break these parts. That was a rusty, rusty part. Look at that. Okay, washer. Thinner washer on the inside, thicker washer on the outside. These are the ball bearings I'm talking about. You do not wanna soak these ones. I'm gonna recommend that if this is your first time, don't mess with the ball bearings. If they are bad, if they don't flow very well, just replace them. Go to a skate shop, and pay maybe like $10, $20 if you want a higher end ball bearing and just replace them. I'm going to take this cam rod post out, push hard. You'll know when a ball bearing is bad, when if you just move it like that, it stops straight away. Typically the higher end ball bearings will spin freely in your hand for quite a while. The bane of these pedals, these screws on the bottom, these are Loctited in. 
So what is Loctite? Loctite is a um, kind of like a screw thread adhesive that is sensitive to changes in heat. And what it will do is it will make these screws almost impossible to get rid of with bare force. If you try to remove these as is, you're gonna have a bad time. You're going to strip these heads. Instead of trying to do that, what you wanna do is you wanna shove these under a heat gun or in the oven, I used to do, that'll also work. And what you'll find is that once these are warmed up, you can remove these really easily. You, want, you wanna use common sense. I uh, stripped screws on the bottom of a DW7000 the first time I ever did this um, on a pedal of my own. And by the way, you can just remove these pads. These are just held on by kind of like factory adhesive. This screw here, the Phillips head screw, that is definitely Loctited. The Allen screws here and here are not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try using a hair dryer first to warm these up. Ideally, you would use a heat gun. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can get it to work with a hair dryer. That's my plan. But first and foremost, we gotta remove these two buggers here. Good thing we decided to restore this pedal because holy moly, very, very dirty. Into the bin. We're gonna hair dry these. That should be enough to um, gelatinize the Loctite in there, but for now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this and do the same thing on the master uh, pedal. Okay. So I removed uh, the, the end cap and the um, spring attachment from the other side, but this side We ran into a new issue, which isn't the end of the world in there. It's a little bit stripped It's a little bit too big Somebody probably tried to remove this at some point with a screwdriver that was a little bit too big or a little bit too small So I am back from the hardware store. Um, I have some great news. I was able to get the Allen uh, machine screws out of that part. There it is. They are now out. This one too. So that was kind of scary for a minute there. And I found a really cool hack. Um, if you have one of these drill bits, it's called a Torx drill bit, the same size. If you look really closely here, you can see that the head is all uh, beaten up, and that's because what I actually ended up doing was shoving this down into the, kind of down into the machine screw, hammering it in, and then since the teeth caught on the inside, I was able to unscrew it. We got all those machine screws out. Um, this is pretty much ready to be removed, as with the ball bearings. Okay, so I just pulled that out of the master pedal. The cam came out. It's in good shape. It'll clean up really, really nice. Here you have the tube that was um, holding the two ball bearings in place. So now I can go ahead and just... Now that that's removed, I can just slide this whole apparatus out. Okay. So this is the only ball bearing I probably can't remove. It is actually riveted on. I'll have to just live with that one and replace the others. We just have to do these Loctite screws now, which leads me into my next part. Okay, let's give this a go now. Those screw right out. Just wanted to say, look at the state of this thing. No wonder it was so stuck. That's the slave pedal done. Master actually doesn't look quite as bad as the slave. Almost there now. Six more screws, and then we'll worry about these posts. Check that out. Yummy. That was the last screw on the base plate. Save that one. Most of these on the master were actually a lot easier to get rid of. And big reveal for the mess. Oh boy. Foot plates. Not too bad under here. Now. Only thing we have to do is we have to do the same process of heating these two screws here. That disconnects the uh, double pedal assembly. There we go. These are in pretty good shape. Ooh, hot, 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 hot.
Um, these would be pretty easy to replace. These screws, um, the tiny little ones, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace all of them. Originally, I didn't plan on doing very much or anything with these guys, but now looking at them, how dirty they are, I'm going to clean them, wire brush them, get all the rust off, soak them in vinegar, prime, and I'm gonna spray paint them. Uh, same thing with this guy. All the small parts are now in this bin. Chinese distilled white vinegar, 5%. Everybody a nice little bath. See if I can get that part to sink. Okay. In the meanwhile, all the large parts are here. These are a bit too big to bathe in vinegar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these up to the bathtub while I sensually touch them and massage them. Flash cut to that. So now we are in my bathroom. I'm going to use a little bit of dish soap and I'm going to start with softer brush and then move on to a hard bristled brush to hopefully clean off this stuff which you can probably see is really really dirty The rust has penetrated a lot of the um, paint. Scrubbing manually with this um, steel brush. I'm giving, uh, I'm gonna be giving the vinegar a little bit of a head start later. So here is the next morning on the pedal parts. As you can see a lot of junk has come off of them. So here we are on day two, and uh, for the most part they look really, really good. Um, I'm gonna have to strip and rust remove both the foot plates. I think the posts, uh, I just need to give these a soak and these should be good. Same thing with the foot pedals. I was looking at this chain a little closer and I realized I can actually disengage this. You can see that there's a locking chain right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and I'm gonna take the chain off because it is quite rusty. There's also a um, screw here. Hey, Nolan from the future here. So I wanted to just take a moment to talk about the part that connects the chain to the rest of the pedal in a little bit more detail. I don't show it very well in the video and it warrants an explanation. The chain is connected via certain parts called master chain links, which are subsequently separated into three smaller parts. The side plate with fixed pins, the removable side plate, and the spring clip. In order to get this chain off, you have to wedge a small screwdriver against the open end of the spring clip. Once removed, you can take off the removable side plate, which in turn allows you to remove the side plate with the fixed pins. Once you do this, you can remove your chain. Okay, now back to the video. Just kidding. The footboard side went pretty smoothly. However, the link connected to the cam was inaccessible because the spring clip was being obstructed by the hardware connecting the chain to the cam. Seeing as this part was riveted to the cam, I decided to remove the rivet in favor of putting in something more accessible later on. With that removed, I was able to get the chain off. So I'm glad I got all, cut these off now because now all I gotta do is do the same thing, wedge a small screwdriver in there, and that should be pretty easy to remove. So both of these chains are now off. Uh, unfortunately, one of the lock pins broke. It was so rusted, um, it was very brittle, so that broke. It's not the biggest deal in the world. If I need to replace it, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, look online, see if I can find a replacement part. Off to the bath uh, with these and degrease and bath for those. A little vinegar bath is swimming along nicely. Seen, uh, there's a lot of foam on the top here. Take as much of the fitting off as I can. And 
hopefully. Best I can, and uh, I'll see you in a minute. You get inside these little nooks and crannies here, but you want to be careful, don't go just spraying it full force. Okay, so what I've done now with these foot plates is I have wire wheeled them um, and I have sanded them. So there is still some black residue coming off of them. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to rinse these and then I'm going to put them in a vinegar bath and that should take care of any rust and then these will be ready to go. so that they don't rust in the open air. Just something to protect them for a little while. In preparation for refinishing the base plates, I first wiped any remaining residue and oil with 100% acetone, and then let them dry completely. Next, using a coat hanger and a cymbal stand, I fashioned my own spray station for the base plates. I wrapped the stand in cling film to avoid any messes. With that out of the way, it was finally time to start spraying. Meanwhile, I had experimented with different polishes and cleaners on the foot pedals, but found that wire brushing them was the only means I had of ridding them of that ugly tarnish. I followed up with sanding the plates and posts, then gave everything one last scrub down with soap and water in the sink. So here are the ball bearings, they've been sitting in this acetone solution for probably the better part of two weeks while I've been getting supplies and parts and this is what's going to determine whether or not these are going to be usable. I'm going to take them out now, I'm going to give them a quick scrubbing down, so uh, wish me luck.
know. Put parts in there. Okay, now we're gonna attach the foot pedal. Five minutes later. what you do. Put a little bit of grease. Put this around. Before your eyes. And with that, the pearl pedal restoration is finally complete. I am really happy with the way this pedal turned out. When I started, it was quite a mess, and now I feel like it's been given a breath of fresh air. This project was a little time consuming, but the outcome really makes it worth it for me. 
I took this pedal to practice straight after I fixed it up, and even though there's really no way I could have measured or subjectively shown you how smooth it was before, I can definitely tell that it feels so much better. It is now super smooth and feeling like new again. I want to take a moment to thank all of my 115 subscribers for following along and watching my videos. I know that this may not sound like a lot to some, but for me, I consider it a real achievement. Your support and feedback are what keep me going, even if there are long periods of time between my uploads. I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. If you're new to my channel, I would also like to take a second to thank you for your watch time. If this video helped you, or you learned something, or if you even just liked it, I would love to hear what you thought in the comments section below. I spend a lot of time editing these videos, and again I apologize that it takes me so long to get these out. I'm going to try and be better about uploading more videos in the future on a more regular basis. Thanks again for watching. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing, as I have many more videos on the way covering all kinds of exciting drum builds, projects, and repairs. And last but not least, remember that a beater drum is only one letter away from a better drum. Bye!